Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the Great Lakes Health Radio Program with your host, Francesca Messiah from Kaleida Health. I just want to say that, believe it or not, this is a, the last program in the month of November. The next program you'll hear is December. And my question is, what happened to the year? What well, has been a good year? And I'm so happy that you are listening um, to, to our program. Um, nothing gives me greater joy than knowing you're, you're, you're listening. Who is Kaleida Health? Kaleida Health, well, we're the hospitals and we're clinics. We're Millard Fillmore Suburban Hospital, we're the Oshai Children's Hospital, Buffalo General Medical Center, Gates Vascular Institute, the Visiting Nursing Association, which I always say, the Visiting Nursing Association will make visits to your home seven days a week, 24 hours a day, regardless if you're at church, if you're at mosque, if you're at synagogue, they make arrangements to see your loved ones as smallest as the as youngest child to the oldest member of your family. Kaleida also has clinics just for children, for pediatrics. We have clinics just for women, women who are expecting a, a newborn. We also have adult clinics and many of our clinics are located in Buffalo. However, we do have sites outside of the Buffalo area as well as our labs. If you have to get lab work, labs are available at both in Buffalo and outside of Buffalo. Bing, 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 bing. Kaleida is hiring. Kaleida is hiring for all positions throughout all of our sites. And I did mention, I forgot to mention our, our long-term care, which is High Point at Michigan and uh, DeGraff, uh, our DeGraff uh, elderly facility long-term care facility, and that's in North Tonawanda. And another area, Kaleida has always supported diversity. We've always supported diversity, community involvement. And one of the areas is through, the, besides outreach and public speaking, is another arm that Kaleida has supported over 20 years, and that is the Near East and West Side Task Force. The Near East and West Side Task Force is separate from uh, Kaleida. It's its own not-for-profit within Kaleida. And today on our program, we're going to be speaking about a program that has been um, part of the Near East and West Side Task Force, and that is called Passport to Wellness. On our show for today, we have two speakers, and as long as, as well as myself, I am uh, Executive Director of the Near East and West Side Task Force, and uh, and today I want to introduce you to one to our board member, uh, that is one, one of our board members, and that's Esmeralda Sierra. Good morning, Esmeralda. How are you? Good morning, Fran. I am doing well, and I'm very pleased and grateful to be here today. Oh, thank you. And I just want everyone to know that. Besides Esmeralda being a long-standing board member of the Near East and West Side Task Force, Malit, um, um, Esmeralda is also president of the Hispanic Heritage Corporation. And our other guest on our phone today, our call, is Melissa Archer. Good morning, Melissa. How are you? <laughs> Hi, Fran. I am wonderful, wonderful. How are you? <laughs> wonderful. Melissa, could you just let our, our uh, Melissa is with Project Hope, and I see you both cares, but Melissa, could you also, Melissa is uh, a behavioral health specialist, but she's more than that, so I'm going to let her share with you her and what all of your initials we'd have. Oh no. Um, so <laughs> yeah, so thank you for having me on. I'm so honored to be here. Um, so I through the Buffalo Urban League, I run a program called New York Project Home. Um, and I'm also a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner um as well. So uh and I do a lot of other things like uh, you know, Francesca stated, uh, too many to to just kind of delve into right here. But the goal is just helping our community um with mental and emotional uh, supports and 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 treatments and and diagnoses and and just helping people find the best versions of themselves, however that looks. 
Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. And I just want to say our topic for today is the Near East and West Side Task Force 12. Our, it's our 12th annual Passport to Wellness program, which takes place December 2nd at the Broadway Market. And where we always, and it's, it's a process, and we'll explain that throughout the program, uh, we give out $10 uh, gift cards to our area supermarket tops. Uh, um, and that's what we will be uh, talking about. And it's to the first 75 people who complete the um, passport. And the first question, I'm going to answer the first one, why passport to wellness? Well, I've been executive director of uh, Near East and West Side Task Force for a good 15 years and um, maybe 13 years. And years ago, and, and it still hasn't, it not. It, I noticed that there was a void in, um, in, in outreach and, and wellness and meeting people where they're at. And I'm always looking, when I'm, in, when I'm walking around or at events, I'm always wondering, I'm always looking at where am I, what's the population, what are the demographics, and is there a, a location to bring members who are in the area of health and education to the community, for the community. So the community uh, on the east side and the lower west side, which is primarily the, the uh, we have many new immigrants, but it's also a large still a large population of our um, of our Latino brothers and sisters. And finding and searching venues that um, are able to host a wellness event, a meaningless wellness event that can have health screenings, free health screenings. So that that's where the um, Passport to Wellness came about. And um, again, the Passport to Wellness program is uh, the first Friday in December, that's December 2nd, at the Broadway Market from 8.45 until 12.30 or until 75 people complete their passport. Um, and next, so, so, es, so Esmeralda, what does, to you, in your words, what does, the, as, what does Passport to Wellness mean to, to our community? Thank you, Fran. Um, yes, I believe that the Passport to Wellness, it's a great resource for the community because when people show up, as you said, they, we, ask them to sign up and in a way we entice them to actually visit the uh the providers presenter but what they realize is by doing that that they do get a lot of very valid information and a many times they realize that the needs that they have there's someone out there that can help them because not many times you are aware of the many, many services and many, many wonderful organizations that we have here in Buffalo that uh, can help you with any, you know, we have providers that offer services for children, for youth, for seniors. Uh, it could be health, it could be school, it could be mental health, you name it. So, I think it's a wonderful resource for the community, and I think the community appreciate it because, as you said, this is the 12th year, so we have had the the support not just for the community from the community, but also from the different groups and organizations that actually show up there to offer their services to the community. Yeah, and I also want to say we also have, and I'll mention the list later, but along those lines, we also have services for um, children whose parents are incarcerated. We have services for incarcerate for, um, I'm sorry, children with autism and support wraparound services for families and health insurance. That's name a few. Um, Melissa, Project Hope has been one of the newest members to be part of the Near East and West Side Task Force wellness events. And, um, and, 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 and why, and, 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 and you're the one responsible for making sure staff is gets there. Uh, mm -hmm. And my question is, why has it, why do you feel it's a benefit? And to talk a little bit about the organization and how many languages um, are, are mm -hmm. people, do they speak, your staff? Oh, yes, yes, yes. So New York Project Hope was born out of um, the the COVID um, pandemic. So it's, uh, it's FEMA funded, so federally funded 
uh, statewide initiative. So it's in many, it's, it's been in many different states, but in New York state, there was initially about maybe almost 60 service providers throughout New York state and in Erie County, um, Buff the Buffalo Urban League and Spectrum were the two just for Erie County. And, um, and so New York Project Hope, like I said, a statewide initiative with services were available to every in Erie County, Erie, any Erie County resident. Um, and we offered crisis counseling, which was free, confidential and anonymous and not just um, emotional support, but resources, teaching people how to reduce their stress, um, helping them understand, you know, their current situations, their reactions and assisting them in review, reviewing their recovery options and promoting, you know, the use or development of coping strategies, positive coping strategies. And then um, resources, you know, aligning them with resources um, in the community was very, very a very essential um, part of the program, which where that's where Passport to Wellness came in. Um, being a part of the, you know, Passport to Wellness, we're able to not only provide resources to community members, but also to other organizations, right? Learning what other organizations are doing so we can enhance our capacity to pass those resources out as well. Um, and yeah, I program, yes, we have like seven languages, cultures, um, religions, LGBTQ, um, every, we try, I try to make sure that the the crisis counselors um, diversity was as diverse to, as could be so that we can, so it's reflective of the communities that we are serving so that if somebody wants, you know, calls in and they speak Somali, I don't speak Somali, you know, I have a Somalian, a, a, you know, somebody that speaks Somali as a crisis counselor that can serve them better. Because that was the the main thing um, is meeting people where they're at. So I love that Passport to Learning goes to the Broadway market, meeting people where they're at, not just in a physical way, but in every way, you know, being intentional and conscientious enough to make sure that we have languages and different, just different nuances that are reflective of the communities we serve so that they will get, um, you know, they will get the supports they need and feel very connected in doing so. You know, thank you. And something you just said, and I just wrote down, it said Passport to Wellness goes to the Broadway market. And I like to think of it like that because Passport to Wellness has gone uh, to Buffalo Municipal Housing, to several areas at Buffalo um, Municipal Housing. Uh, um, uh, I know we were at LBJ er um, earlier this year. Uh, Passport to Wellness has, has traveled to uh, different uh, companies and so I like that Passport to Wellness goes to, I think we have a slight update in the name. Because <laughs> that's, 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 that's exactly what it that's, is. It sounds good. It sounds good. Thank you. Um, Esmeralda, what are some of the, um, what, what, what are some of the uh, uh, businesses that you've seen come through or yes. Yes. So what are some of the businesses that you've seen? Uh, as part of this o over the past several years? Um, as I mentioned before, it's very diverse. Um, we have had different uh, insurances being there and offering their services. In addition to that, we have had the Erie County Department of Senior Services. Uh, we have had the Erie County Cancer Prevention Services. In addition to that, we have uh, Buffalo Prenatal Perinatal uh, Network, we have had the Alzheimer Association. So you see, it's a little bit for everyone from children. Oh, the Buffalo Public Schools has been there. So the great thing about the event is that the variety is so diverse. And like you said, many representatives also come from um, organizations that serve the new immigrants too, because their needs are different. Uh, to the people that it's already established in the area. So there's a little bit uh, of, every, uh, there's something for everyone. So I truly believe that everybody should stop by. It doesn't take that long. You know, when you say that you have to get your passport and stop by by the participating vendors, you know what? It doesn't take that long and it's very worth it because in addition to getting the services and the information, we have had like blood pressure testing, glucose testing so right there you can have your um your results we have had a uveal physical therapy students assessing the patients that show up so i'm telling you it's 
such a huge array of services that you can um, get to in one place in a few minutes and it's it definitely is worth it so i invite everyone to come and stop by um and if you know what and if you come and stop by and you think of someone that you know what you should consider to have here next year so and so so just let us know because maybe we can make that happen for the future but again it's a very well organized event and um you i'm sure you're gonna have you're going to find someone that's going to help you. Thank you. Es Esmeralda, and em Esmeralda, could you just summarize what you just said in a few words in Spanish for our Spanish listeners? Most definitely. I will be happy to do that. Um, yo quiero invitar a toda la comunidad hispana. Mi nombre es Esmeralda Sierra. Yo soy la presidenta del Concilio de la Herencia Hispana del Oeste de Nueva York. Los quiero invitar a todos al duodécimo pasaporte a la salud del de tiempo de Navidad, que va a ser este 2 de diciembre, viernes 2 de diciembre, comenzando a las 8 y 45 de la mañana hasta las 12 y 30 de la tarde en el Broadway Market 999 de la avenida Broadway en Buffalo. Van a ver proveedores ofreciendo muchos servicios y si usted pasa por allí se inscribe, eh, puede recibir una tarjeta de 10 dólares para el supermercado Tabs para que haga sus compras necesarias para ahora para el tiempo de Navidad. So ya saben, Broadway Market, pasaporte a la salud, Duodécimo año haciendo esto el 2 de diciembre a las 8 y 45 de la mañana hasta las 12 y 30 de la tarde en el Broadway Market. Thank you. Because we normally have um, a couple of staff from different organizations who speak Spanish. So I just wanted to make sure that the message got out to our Latino community because that's a part of who the Near East and West Side Task Force are. Melissa. And, and you have been, um, your organization has been boots on the ground since um, the, the massacre on September 14th. However, what, what are some of the concerns, I mean, that you, that what, what are some of the concerns in the area of behavioral health? Are they just for children? Are they for adults? Who, who, who like, can anyone come to the table and ask questions? And what are some of the questions that people may be afraid to ask, but shouldn't be. Could you talk on that? Oh, absolutely. So I say from the cradle to the grave, if you will, um, there is no age limit because um, we are in spaces where we're dealing with children, doing you know healing groups, resilience groups, um, and with seniors and with um, you know, um, disabled individuals, like we, there, there is no, um, no rules, right. That in terms of who we serve, um, and we have a helpline where people can call in as well as we have a site, uh, like a block up from tops when tops happened, uh, we got a, a satellite, like but a day and a half later, um, right up the street where people can actually walk in and receive emotional support and resources, um, and things like that. Some of the concerns now are more centered around, I mean, like it was a six month anniversary uh, three days ago. And uh, so a lot of the concerns, I mean, people are still grieving. They're still, um, you know, traumatized. So, you know, and now it's, it's so that is still there. I don't think that will go away anytime soon. Um, but, you know, housing concerns is a, is a big concern. Um, food concerns, you know, so just the concrete needs of the everyday are the concerns people are having. But what we are really seeing um, is really an uptick in youth in terms of, and, you know, there's been data uh, uh, surrounding this um, in terms of depression, anxiety, suicide attempts, things of that nature. Um, and, you know, just a lot more gun violence and violence in general. And, you know, it's in, re you know, it's in response to what was going on before COVID and COVID and then 514. Um, and it just, it, it just the everyday grind, just even the generational trauma, you know, the collective trauma. So, you know, we're dealing with all that, like I said, from three to 90, you know, um, and we never say no to any organization, individual group that request our services. Um, so we do provide the emotional support and the Urban League itself, you know, we, we're able to lean on them for a lot of the resources, 
The only thing around social injustice, health, housing, like I said, is huge. Um, education, like somebody needs to get their GED or workforce development. You know, the Buffer Urban League provides all that. And then, you know, we definitely collaborate with a lot of different organizations, churches, um, block clubs, community members, you know, whomever, just to, to help not only the individual, but the communities and families, you know, heal on some level, find some positive coping strategies and just, you know, try to find the best versions of themselves within this, you know, um, within the state that we are currently in. And, and I want and I want to say that you also, as well as Hispanic Heritage Council, Project Hope also works with the Near East to West Side Task Force. I know it seems obvious, yes. but I just wanted to um, I just wanted to mention that. Um, and, and just let me give, give you an overview. So so one so if you're coming, walk into the Broadway market, you might see someone in a Santa hat or something festive, some colorful hat or some type of colorful sweater. And they'll just stop you over by the because we are set up by the by the meat section where all the meat vendors and all the food vendors. That's where the you'll see 10 tables and lots of energetic, happy, smiling faces there to uh, greet you and share information. Then you stop at one table and you get what's called the passport. All you need is write. You just write your name down. So uh, Miss um, Mrs. X is number one. Mr. X is number two. You just sign your name and you receive what's a, what's a pa- what is a passport with the participating agencies, which include, um, we'll have information from the Hispanic Heritage Council as well as we'll have the table there from um, Project Hope. We also have Great Lakes Cancer Care and they'll, they'll have information on screenings and such that, that, that you should re- receive. We encourage uh, people of color, black and brown to receive because they uh, impact us the most. We have housing opportunities made equal. We have someone from Urban League Foster Care. We have uh, someone uh, will be from Oshai Pediatrics. Uh, we'll have someone from Erie County with the colon cancer kits. We'll have Christ. We'll have Catholic Health. They'll be doing bone bone density scanning. We'll have Univera with health insurance information. We're hoping to have free den- to have dental screenings. And I know we're going to have someone there from UB Educational Opportunity Center, as well as the Osborne. And the Osborne is the organization that works with children whose parents are incarcerated and many of them who are incarcerated in downstate. So, again, helping that young person cope. And then you just go around and you meet with the different organizations of a very brief com- conversation. Now, Melissa, I'm going to ask you, if I'm coming to your table I'm concerned about I'm 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 the grandmother. I'm concerned about my granddaughter or my grandson who are 11 years old and something just isn't right. Do I do I see you? Do you tell me things there or, or are you there for me to make an appointment? All of the above. So we will chat with you. We will chat with the community member right there because the crisis counselors are the ones that man the tables as well when we're doing tablings. Um, so they will, you know, take you to the side for privacy and confidentiality, have a chat. And then, you know, we will give you our information where you can just come on down anytime because we always have someone on call. Um, and then also the helpline because some people might want to do it from home, you know, the comfort of their home. Then we also give them resources based on that conversation. Um, and there's no time limit on the conversation either. So if some if they're saying, oh, you know, um, you know, they're, they're stressed out, you know, uh, you know, whatever the case may be, we may give them resources to actually get, um, you know, into a support group or if it's housing or if the, you know, whatever's going on with the 11 year old, let's see exactly what's going on. Maybe bring the 11 year old in with you. Um, so yeah, we do a lot of families as well. So it's, it's very individualized. And so it it depends on, you know, what is presented and then we take it from there. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. And I, I want to say what age to participate 16 and older, because we know many of our 15 and 16 year olds have, Mm -hmm. have children and they need food or they live alone. We, there are teens out there who live alone. And again, we don't want to say, oh, you don't look old enough or you're too young. We are judgment free. We are not there. The Near East and West Side Task Force, Passport to Wellness is not there to judge you on how you look, your age, any of that. We want to make sure that you just have a brief conversation or a long conversation with our vendors between the hours of 845 till 11 till 1230 
or until the 75 cards uh, gift cards run out. If you just want to see an agency, you're not interested in going through, you can do that. Many times that's what help happens. Someone just needs health insurance. They need to sign up for health insurance. This is open enrollment time. They just go to that person for the health insurance and then they go on about their day. You know, so I, so I just want you to know if you don't want to talk to everybody, you do not have to. But to get the gift card, you have to at least have a, com- a brief, very brief conversation. Um, Esmeralda, in Spanish, could you say again um, that the program takes place December 2nd at the Broadway Market from 1145, um, 845 until 1230? as long as gift cards are there for 75 people. Yes, most certainly, Fran. And I was going to say, too, that uh, even if you don't feel that you need to stop by it for yourself, maybe you can get information for somebody else and share that information. So I encourage everyone to to stop by because it's going to be a great event, and, it's, and I'm sure it's going to help many, many people. And, yes, definitely, I'll say that in Spanish now. Thank you. <laughs> Eh, les queremos recordar una vez más a todos que el día 2 de diciembre, viernes, estaremos en el Broadway Market, eso es en el 999 de la avenida Broadway, con el duodécimo pasaporte a la salud de las navidades. Así que los esperamos a todos desde las 8 y 45 de la mañana hasta las 12 y 30 de la tarde y las primeras 75 personas que se registren y completen el pasaporte recibirán una tarjeta de 10 dólares de los supermercados TAPS. Así que los esperamos a todos. Thank you. And I want to thank, uh, we, we are out of time. And I just want to thank um, Melissa Archer from Project Hope. Uh, home and house at the Buffalo Urban League. And there's an address on Jefferson, correct? Yes, 1359 Jefferson Avenue, one block up from top. Mm-hmm. And your phone number? Uh, our helpline is 716-250-2478. 716-250-2478. And the helpline is available Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Thank you. And, and Esmeralda, president of Hispanic Heritage Corporation, If anyone has questions about Hispanic Heritage Corporation, the number, please. Yes, uh, I'm with the Hispanic Heritage Council of Western New York, and that's our our best way to contact us will be the email, and it's that hispanicheritagewny.org. That's our website, and our email will be info at hispanicheritagewny.org. And for those that prefers to give us a call, it's going to be 716 416- Four zero two one four four two four uh four zero two one four four two. Thank you. I can't thank you enough, ladies, Esmeralda and and Melissa. And I will see you in a few weeks, December second, at the Broadway Market. And in two weeks, I just want to say you will. Well, next week you will hear Cindy Bass from ECMC. And in two weeks, God be willing, you'll hear me again. I'm Francesca Messiah from Kaleida Health. Thank you. Stay well and uh, stay well and stay warm. All right. Bye-bye.